let's take a look at acceleration. So we've seen that velocity changes, and you probably already knew that. Uh, things don't always move at the same velocity, so of course velocity changes. Well, we need a way to quantify how rapidly the velocity changes, the rate at which the velocity can change. And that's what acceleration does. The definition of acceleration is it's the ratio of the change in velocity to the time that it takes to change that velocity. So that's similar to our definition of velocity, where velocity was a ratio of the change in the position to the time that it takes. It's just we've changed the word position with velocity. And because we know that it's a ratio, we can write this as an equation now. Acceleration, the symbol we use for that is a, a is equal to the ratio of the change in the velocity to the time that it takes. So we'll use the symbol delta for change, so delta v divided by the time that it takes. So that is the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time that it takes to change the velocity. And from this equation we can get the units. Let's see, well up on top we have a velocity, and the velocity has units of meters per second, and in the bottom we have time, which is in seconds. So we end up with meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. So the unit of acceleration is meters per second squared. Acceleration is a vector, it has a direction, and the direction of the acceleration is a little bit tricky. The direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of the change in velocity. Now, that's important. Acceleration is not in the same direction as velocity. Acceleration is in the same direction as the change in velocity. And we'll see what that means a little bit later. And real quickly, while we're at it, uh, a common symbol for final velocity is v, and a common symbol for initial velocity is u. So what we can do is we can write the acceleration is equal to the change in the velocity, which is final velocity minus initial velocity, or v minus u, divided by the time that it takes, which is t. Now we'll practice with numerical problems another time, but right now I want to look at a motion diagram for a ball. And let's say the ball is moving from left to right, and here's the diagram. And my question is, is the acceleration of the ball positive, negative, or zero? We're going to choose positive to be to the right. So in this case, the ball starts out with a big positive velocity. And later on, it has a small positive velocity. Okay, so it had a big positive velocity, and then later on, it had a small positive velocity. So the velocity went from big positive to small positive, so the velocity decreased. Now that's another way of saying that the velocity changed in a negative way. The change in the velocity was negative. And remember, a moment ago I said that the acceleration has the same direction as the change in the velocity. So in this case, if the change in the velocity is negative, then the acceleration is also negative. Now let's change it around a little bit. Let's say I have a situation where positive is to the left. The ball is still going to move from left to right, but positive is now to the left. Okay, so we have this situation. So let's figure out what the direction of the acceleration is. Well, it starts out and it's moving in a negative direction. And it's got a pretty big velocity, so it's a big negative velocity at the beginning. And then later on the velocity is smaller, but it's still negative. So we go from a big negative velocity to a small negative velocity. Hmm. Well, if we went from very, very negative to less negative, then that means it changed in a positive sense. And if you don't see that, one way that you can see that, that you can convince yourself that that's true, is try drawing a diagram of the, or excuse me, a graph of the velocity versus time. It went from a big negative velocity to a small negative velocity. Now that means that the change was positive. And if the change in the velocity is positive, then the acceleration is also positive. Now this is tricky. And my suggestion to you is when you're analyzing this, determine the sign and the magnitude of the velocity at the beginning, 
and then determine the sine and the magnitude of the velocity at the end. And think about how the velocity changed. Did the velocity become more positive, which is to say less negative? Or did the velocity become less positive or more negative? If the velocity became more positive or less negative, then that means it changed in a positive sense. And so the acceleration is positive. If the velocity changed to be more negative or less positive, then that means that the change in the velocity was negative and the acceleration is negative.